Look forward to that third quarter coming up in about 15 minutes' time. We'll take a break and we're back with more action on Saturday Sport. Waitman picks it up well. Great little rover, started on the bench, looks for Wiley. He was named on the bench. Taylor doing battle with him. Goes towards the boundary line. He may have handballed it to his opponent. Rendell, Shepherds well. Through goes Egan. Egan in the forward pocket, puts the ball high towards the goal square. Big punch away from Taylor and the ball over the boundary line. It will be thrown back into play. 36 plays 62 with Fitzroy trailing. Richmond in the second quarter, kicking 5-1 to Fitzroy's 1-3. Boundary throw in, in the forward pocket. Cloak. Wilson. Looks for Hinchin. Fitzroy in trouble. Great tackle by Rioli. Bartlett in for the backup. Snap it, goal. Off target, one behind. Bartlett kicked two goals in the second quarter and got away from Grant Laurie, who held him pretty well during the first term. 36 to 63 is the score. Jerry McCarthy having a pretty torrid day on Taylor. That's a beautiful kick. Almost to the square. Quinlan flies and has brought down the mark in front of Barry Rowlings. Quinlan got a nasty knock on the eye during the second quarter. Seems to be okay. McMahon has it knocked away from him. On the rebound, picks it up well. Wilson makes the lead. Had a great first quarter, Gary Wilson, with six kicks and three hand passes. Detroit fumbling badly. Lewis, uh, not Lewis, but Coleman. Welsh to Martello. Carlson fumbles. Push in the back. Will be a Fitzroy free kick to be taken by Poynton. Poynton right on the edge of the square. A long way from goal at VFL Park. Ideal playing conditions today. Richmond reveling in them. Kick dropping a little bit short. And the mark taken for Fitzroy about 15 metres out from goal. Cox has the ball. And has a chance to bring up his first goal. And Fitzroy badly needed one at the moment. They've only kicked one since the first quarter. Daryl Cox, 25 metres out from goal, I think yeah. has made a mess of it. He has. So bad kicking from Cox. And the scores, Richmond still leading 10-3 to 5-7. Well, that was a, a bad mistake by Cox. Uh, what, he'd only be, what you say, Pete, 20 metres out from goal? Well, I would say 20 to 25 at the most, Luke. And uh, Fitzroy still to score uh, a goal. Well, only scored one goal since uh, quarter time. Cox grabbed that one, couldn't quite get it clear. Bit of buffling going on now as Rendell tries to pick it up. It's a long way down for this big fellow. Finally forced out of bounds by uh, Point. So it's out of bounds about uh, 50 metres around from the Fitzroy goal. There are five goals, 737 to Richmond, 10 363. Well, Rendell tapped that, but Rollins finally got it, kicked it out wide towards the boundary line, and it's out of bounds again. This time it's about 70 metres around from the Fitzroy goal. Well, this is a vital quarter for the Lions. They've got to kick a couple of goals, and uh, well, they've got to hold uh, Richmond in this quarter if they possibly can. Taylor's kicked five goals up there at full forward for the Tigers. Rollins in front there, buffing his way through the pack, a fresh air shot. Comes down here now to Conlon. Things have been quiet for him today as he kicks the ball back there and a mark taken by McMahon. Doesn't waste any time. Quickly plays on. Hesitates. Goes for a long kick up there towards the full forward position. Manate in the box seat. Couldn't hold the mark. Now he's trying to get out, but they're all having a bit of a go at it. Now Manate in the front fuzzy again. Taps it on. But no one making any headway at the moment as they're falling over left and right. And the umpire's going to ball it up about 12 metres out from the Fitzroy goal. Still 26 points the difference in favour of the Tigers. And we're into this uh, third quarter by just on four and a half minutes. Knocked out again by Martello, picked up by Wilson. This is OK to mark one on the edge of the square by Cox. He nearly played on, I think. He, no, I don't know whether he played. I think he was that excited. He got the <laughs> mark on the, edge, on the edge of the square. And he's got a straight shot here. He doesn't mess about about that one. It's through the middle. So Fitzroy move on at six goals. 7.43 to Richmond, 10.363. Well, there's Cox, the boy that kicked the goal. He missed an easy one about two minutes ago, but he made amends that time. One goal to Cox, and there's only, what, uh, 17 points the difference now. Or well, 20 points the difference a now. A badly needed one to Fitzroy. They really were totally outclassed in the second quarter by Richmond. Bartlett cut loose, got away from 
his uh, opponent who had done a particularly good job in the first quarter that was Grant Laurie and we saw Taylor kick two further goals to add to the tally of three that he kicked in the first quarter so Detroit the badly needed goal now trail 10 3 to 6 7 it's 20 points the difference at the five and a half minute mark of the third quarter out of the center Conlon wide towards the flanks not the way to go at BFL Park Parrish is out there can't take the mark knocked down to Martello from Strawn now's Petroy's chance Quinlan to Conlon this is better Conlon on his own has the bounce has got the pace McMahon straightens up in front of goal shoots it's another one Petroy can't close up that's his second goal Richmond 10-3 63 leading Fitzroy 7-7 49. Well, Conlon's made a difference, a very quiet first half, and he's been in the thick of things from the word go. As you see a hand pass coming out to Quinlan, over to Conlon. He could have a bit of a run here, and he decides to take the ball right down, drag, drag his opponent up and give it over to McGrath for an easy shot for goal. Sixty-three to forty-nine now at the six and a quarter minute mark. Third quarter, seven's big league from BFL Park as Waitman drives the Tigers forward. Chris Smith, two hands to it. Cloak in front of Taylor. Now Taylor gets there first. Wide towards Carlson, who makes pace. Egan's hot on his hammer. The balk wasn't a good one, but he got his kick in. Quinlan behind. Manane was there. Plenty of Richmond players. Rollings. Manane again. Gets the ball a lot, but can't often do something constructive with it. Brioli. Oh, class from the West Australian. Wiley, speaking of West Australians, covered by uh, Serafini. Emmett Dunn. The spin out by Smith, ineffective. He's caught with the ball, but umpire Rowan Soros has decided to ball it up almost on the point of the square. Right on the point of the square. Cloak and uh, Rendell. Rendell tapped that out. Now's a chance for Tata to pick it up. A hand pass back to Wilson. Still playing well for Fitzroy. Short kick. Oh, good mark to Bernie Quinlan. Scooped it up like a slips catch that time. Right on the uh, centre wing position. Actually, he's down towards half back. Goes for a short pass. It's okay. It's found Conlon now coming into his own. Getting on top of range at the moment. Over the head of the pack. There's a chance now for uh, Kane to pick the ball up. He doesn't mess about. An experienced player. Wilson at the back goes for the punt, but not big enough that time. And Dunn is able to take the mark at centre half back. A good pass over the ex uh, Fitzroy player, Muggerman. Muggerman plays on. A hand pass coming out here to Wiley on his own. Kicks the ball long. Smith in front of uh, Cloak that time, and he's got the mark. He's not paying it. By oh, golly, the crowd not too happy about it, but it's saved at the moment as Hitchin gets it away. Coming in now as Muggerman knocked away by Taylor, picked up by Point. And Fitzroy looking a lot better at the moment as the pass goes around there on the mark to Harris. Harris has got the mark on the centre wing position, ready to send Fitzroy back into attack again. Ah, oh, McMahon outmanoeuvred Kane that time. A part in play. Oh! oh, the crowd going mad. It must be a free kick to McMahon that time. No, he said play on. They're not too happy about it now as Rollings picks it up. Then he balked, goes for a long kick down there towards centre half forward. Quinlan in position, takes the mark. He looks as though he's playing a loose man down there on the back line. And the crowd say, take that off him, umpire. As well they might. Some strange umpiring decisions, which I dare say we could talk about on HSB's World of Sport tomorrow. Bernie Quinlan, that's a great kick. Cox is the flyer over the top of Landy. Strawn is in front. Wilson hot on his hammer over the line. It will be a throw-in. 49 to 63. I know on a dry day, the umpires generally specify that players really have to hold the grab for it to be declared a mark, but some of them have been strange interpretations this afternoon. Tapped down by Emmett Dunn, picked up by Egan. Landy late on the scene, Manane marks. Again, his disposal is good. This time it's to Wilson. On the boundary line, he's got the pace to beat Jess. Lines up the goals, missed it out of bounds. It rolls over the line, the throw in in Fitzroy's forward pocket. The Lions doing a lot better in the third quarter. In fact, they attacked this goal well in the first term, but went out of the match in the second. They trailed 49 to 63. Close to the goals. Over the top is Quinlan. Takes it out. Caught. It's going goalwards, but Jess is there. Harris too late. Over to Rowlings, and Rowlings will clear it for the Tigers. 
And it's back there now. It's Egan taking the mark there at centre half. Uh, back goes for a kick. Actually, from off the side of his boot that time. Here's a go for Wiley, playing the ball nicely in front of his collar. Well, got it by point. And the ball is out of bounds. Out of bounds on the centre wing position. Richmond finding it very hard to get it over their half forward line at the moment. 49 points Fitzroy to Richmond 63. And we're ten and a half minutes into this third quarter. Well, they all missed that one. The umpire says it'll be a free kick to Rendell against uh, Dunn. Losing his temper there, but he didn't uh, do it that bad to, to receive a 15-metre penalty. Back to centre half forward. Wilson in front. Down he goes. Picked up by Rollings. Doing pretty well, too, for the Tigers. Smith and Cloak battling there. It's Cloak coming away with the ball. A beautiful hand pass to Muggerman. And the ex Fitzroy player runs to an open goal and fires, and he's put it through. Muggerman's first goal. And uh, the Tigers. Well, let's say Fitzroy, seven goals, 7 49 to Richmond, 11 3. 69. There it is in replay again. A good battle that time between Cloak and Smith. A long hand pass. A perfect hand pass to Muggerman. And he had to sit back there. That's all he had to do and fire for the goals. On Simmons Big League in the third quarter, it's 20 points the difference in favour of Richmond. 69 to 49. Knocked down by Muggerman who kicked the last goal. Cloak, Richmond skipper, high towards the full forward position, looking for Taylor. McCarthy with the punch. Well, but beautifully off the top. Goal, or has he missed it? Just over the top of the post. And Bartlett, disgusted. Not so much with the decision, perhaps, that he didn't take enough time. Here it is in replay. Took it beautifully off the pack. Please. Yes, it was superb. Vintage Bartlett, 21 points the difference. A very useful lead to Richmond as we await the kick in by Jerry McCarthy, who has had more than a busy afternoon. Grant Laurie, number three, takes it in front of Bartlett. He started well on the veteran, but I think Bartlett is now on top. Centre wing, punched down by Strawn. Waitman is in front. The Rollings. Clever, back to Cloak. Taylor from behind. No, can't pay the mark. Well, that's strange because there were a few at the other end that you would swear were better marks than that one. Might have been a different umpire. Let's watch it in replay. What's your decision at home? I think I'd well, pay it, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the other guy touches it at all. No, I think you're right. Anyway... Fitzroy supporters not happy with that. Not happy with the mark or the decision, especially as a couple at the other end went the other way. Taylor for goal number six has got it. Great effort. Richmond no further ahead on seven's big league. The Tigers 12-4. That's 76 points. Leading Fitzroy 7-7-49. I do know this fellow's having. I think he's only had about... Uh, Six kicks and six goals. Not a bad performance. That's a great performance. And if I can recall, Pete, I think when he played the last time with Richmond, I don't think he ever played at full forward. I think they played him on a flank in, in the uh, forward pocket. This is the first time he's had a real go at full forward, so it's going to be mighty hard for Roach to get back in the team at the moment. I think Roach would get back in the team. There's not so much doubt about that. Seventh big league from VFL Park, 49 to 76, 13 and a half minutes have gone in the third term. Kicked off the ground by Big L Pal, uh, Martello, and marked here by Taylor at half back. Taylor with the ball. Fitzroy badly needing a goal now because they're really in the hot seat as the ball goes out wide towards Monane. He flies, got his hands to it, it's a mark. Sides to play on, gets the ball over there to Harris. That's a good mark too. A long kick up there towards the goals. Wilson and Malthouse going for this one. Malthouse at the back. They both go down. Wilson on top of Malthouse. And the umpire said, what is it? A ball up in the forward pocket position. Only about 10 metres out from the Fitzroy scoring zone. 7-7-49 seven, seven, Fitzroy to Richmond 12-4-76. And we're approaching the 14 and a half minute mark of the third quarter. Pushed down by Coleman. The ball finally sent back there towards that half four back line. It's grabbed here by Egan. They're starting to look good now, the Tigers. As a matter of fact, they've looked good since half time. Or well, before half time. The kick falls short. And a mark taken here by uh, Lowry. Lowry at centre half back. Better to send Fitzroy back into attack again. Out there to Rendell with a good pass. 
but they're certainly going the long way around Fitzroy out there towards the wings still going around the flanks a chance now for uh, Kane to take the mark and he takes a good one there at half back interchange play uh, McCarthy coming off well I suppose that's understandable the guys had six kicks on him and kicked six goals Eves coming on Eves uh, coming on the ground number 24 picked up by Smith Fitzroy go back into attack again over their half forward line Cox and uh, Straw neither take the mark Ball pushed out now, finally picked up by Moldhouse. A hand pass out to Wiley on his own. They've got plenty of loose men, the Tigers, at the moment. As the ball falls short, nearly a push in the back that time to Smith, but the umpire said play on. This gives little Dale Wait and a chance over to Rioli. Watch him take the ball away and a hand pass. Down there towards uh, Bartlett. Bartlett coming in to meet it. Tapped on by Serafini. Taylor and uh, going after it is Eves. Eves on his back there. Taylor goes for a hand pass. He's still after it now. Waitman comes and he copped one from Taylor but missed it. Now Taylor, this is Taylor of Richmond going after. Taylor of Fitzroy. There's plenty of Taylors there at the moment as the ball goes out of bounds. On that half forward line for Richmond, about 45, 50 metres around from their goal. Third quarter, 49 to 76, still in favour of Richmond as we await the boundary throw in. It's the Tigers, and they're looking good in the third quarter. Rendell from behind. Scrambly play, picked up by Hinchin, the back pocket player. Plenty of distance in his kick to the centre wing position, almost through the legs of Michael Malthouse. Picked up by Muggerman, loses it. Now he regains it again to Dunn. The big guy slips over. He is a policeman. Harris. And the mark taken down there by Graham Landy. Smith flies. Rowling's the rebound. Bartlett in front. Punched away by Laurie. Into the open, Serafini, Fitzroy vice-captain, will get there first, gets a nice bounce. Welsh goes for him, he's down. A little bit of a wrestle behind play, I predicted that. Umpire Saw is coming in to separate them. In the meantime, play goes on downfield with the chance for McMahon to pick it up. He's got the front running. McMahon snaps it, goal off target, through for one behind. So Fitzroy getting a point when they badly needed a major score. And Richmond, 12-4, 76, leading Fitzroy, 7-8-50 by 26 points. That's a pretty useful lead going into the final quarter, although we've only been playing 17 and a half minutes into the third term. Fitzroy would certainly have to lift their game to get closer. Martano, wide towards the outer side. Rendell in front, done from behind. Great mark, Emmett. Dunn's kick, looking for Muggerman, who's made a pretty good debut today with the Tigers. Came into the match as a last-minute replacement. Wiley. By name and nature, over the head of Bartlett. Has he got the speed? Eves is there. Look at Bartlett. Hungry into the goal square. Snaps. That's another one. Well done, Kevin Bartlett. Great goal from the veteran. That's his third. The Bartlett salute says it all. Richmond. 13-4, great kicking, 82 points, lead Fitzroy by over five goals, 7-8-50. Well, this is great play on the part of uh, Bartha, but Taylor knocked the ball over. Look at Bartha now, gets himself back to come on his left foot, and in the true tradition of a rover, had a shot for goal. And he's put it through, why not? So it's 13-4-82, Richmond of Fitzroy, 7-8-50. Seven's big league, it's 32 points the difference at the 18 and three quarter minute mark of the third term. And Richmond go back into a ton th uh, attack through Dunn, but Bucket goes now to Wiley, drives the ball back, and Bartlett's got it again. He's about uh, 45 metres out from goal directly in front. He's let himself go since about halfway through that uh, second quarter. Laurie held him pretty well, but now the old timer, the old stage are playing. He's 363rd game, is going for goal number four. I think he'll play a thousand games, this guy. I'm not kidding. Fires at the goals. This time he's off target and the ball is out of bounds. Interchange player, Waitman coming off and going onto the ground as last year's skipper, Brian Wood. Of course, David Cloak's the captain this year. They move them around there pretty quickly. They've had six captains in six years, Fitz, uh, Richmond. Knocked out to Rendell. Rendell at uh, half back, a long hand pass over to Carlson. Now he's clear, he's going to go for a bit of a dash around the wing here. That's uh, his second bounce. Now he's uh, kicking the ball from that half fall on a pass to Cox on his own. We'll see what Cox will do. He's going to have a running, flying shot at goal from the angle. 
And I think he might have put it through. He has for a goal. A good shot by Cut for goal number two. And Fitzroy move on to eight goals, eight. 56 to Richmond, 3-4-82 at the 20-minute mark. Well, that was a nice goal by Cox. Very oh. difficult shot, particularly he's on his wrong foot for a right uh, footer, Peter. Yes, that's right. You see him coming around the wing, and good play on the part of Carlson, drawing the opponents up towards him, so that gave uh, Carlson a chance to be on his own, uh, Cox to be on his own. And Cox, from that boundary line, puts it through with a right footer. 13-4 to 8-8 eight, eight on Sevens Big League. 20 and a half minutes have gone in the third quarter. Martello, mammoth kick up towards full forward over the head of Bartlett. Eves come in, comes in for the attention, in for the assist. Bartlett on the boundary line. The ball is over and it will be thrown in. Well, they've taken uh, Laurie off, uh, off Bartlett and put uh, Harris on to win, Pete. Harris, uh, I think, would have the speed. He did have a knee operation during the summer. Rioli... Their expensive recruit, Hinchin, loses the ball. Back to Rioli, who collides heavily with Manane. Big Rendell gets out of trouble. Well done by the big guy who is carrying Fitzroy's rucks today. Brian Wood, first kick of the match. He's just come on, of course. And Rendell takes another mark in the back pocket. Five marks to Matt Rendell. His brother Tim will be playing in the reserves here tomorrow at VFL Park. Wood can't take the mark. Cox's handball to Wilson is effective. Wilson's gone out of the game. He had a great first term with nine possessions. Conlon thought about the handball as Cox went past. Short pass. Poynton at half forward. And just saying to Barry Rowlings, back off. They're going wide for Troy. That's Laurie, the halfback flanker, having a shot for goal. And how has he kicked it? OK. Grant Laurie's first goal, predictably, he's just been moved there. And Fitzroy come a little bit closer. Richmond, 13 goals, 4, 82 points. Now leading Fitzroy by 20 points. The Lions, 9-8, 62. Well, they're not out of it, Peter, because no. they're just getting that goal to keep themselves within striking distance all the time. They can't go goal for goal, Lou. They've got to pile them on to get up That's there. Right. There's the replay, a short pass to Laurie. It looked as though it could have missed that one, but it must have moved in at the last moment and through for a goal. I think we might have a new ball being brought out because that one hasn't come back from the crowd which, as we estimated before, on the advice of the VFL Park manager, Ralph Lane, round about the 40,000 mark in delightful conditions here at the league's headquarters, which have had considerable improvements done to them during the year, including the Super Boxes, where our program manager is enjoying a hot dog this afternoon, Gary Fenton. And they certainly uh, are really super. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. It's 20 points the difference now as we approach the 23-minute mark of the term. There's Coleman going for the knockout. He got that one pushed on by Manane. A chance now for Lower to get clear. He couldn't quite get out as we see McMahon battling against three Richmond Tigers. It's Wood coming out, but they down him. Umpire said he had no hope of getting rid of that, so it'll be a ball up about uh, 50 metres out from the Fitzroy goal. They're trailing by 20 points at the moment. As we approach the 23 and a half minute mark of the third quarter, back there to Laurie, shifted from that half back line away from Bartlett, and Conlon's also been shifted down to the forward pocket from the centre, and he takes this mark only about 25 metres out from goal directly in front, and of course Conlon's yet to score a goal. There's the replay of that. Conlon getting himself into position, and he's a pretty tough character, this guy. Beautifully built uh, fella for about, uh, I think he's about 5 foot 11, about 44 around the chest. There's a kick, he kicked it like a weightlifter that time too, and it's out through and, uh, for one point. So Fitzroy move on to uh, nine goals, 9.63 to Richmond, 13.482, and uh, it's 19 points the difference. But they've got to pile a few more on because we've got a very tiring last quarter coming up as we see uh, Strawn take a mark in that back pocket position for the Tigers. Kick going around there towards that uh, half-back line. Point and Wood do battle, but it's Point getting in front of Wood takes a good mark. Spins out of the pack, quickly plays on. It's up towards the full forward position again. Charge for Coleman to take a mark. There's Moldhouse going for the hand pass. Playing it safe and going for the boundary line. And the ball is out of bounds about uh, 30 metres around from the Fitzroy goal. 24 and a half minutes gone of this third quarter and still Fitzroy down by 19 points. Both these sides will be very, very tired after the game. Knocked out by Martello, picked up by Quinlan, and the big fella shows a lot of pace. 
It's a left foot hook shot back there towards Cox. He got under that, couldn't hold the mark. Jess is trying to pick it up there in the forward pocket. Now Jess has got it. We'll go across goals, right out to the wide open space. A chance for Carlson to get this. Egan's after him, but he's got plenty of time to get clear of Egan. Goes for a short pass to Wilson. Wilson couldn't hold that. Only one in the back. Down they go left and right again. A bit of a stack up developing here, and the umpire's going to ball it up. Out there on uh, Fitzroy's half fourth on about 60 metres out from their goal. Fitzroy, nine goals, 9.63 to Richmond, 13 for 82. And we're into the time on period now of the third quarter. Rendell and Dunn. Rioli. Or was it Egan? Might have been Egan. Picked up by Reigns now. Reigns in towards the centre of the ground. Didn't bounce too well for him. Hinchin goes the tap down to Poynton. And you've got Collett. Muggerman. Serafini into the ground. Rioli to Muggerman again. As I said, quite a good debut today for his new side. Superb pass, Bartlett. After a quiet first quarter, Bartlett's done well. And look at that for a pass. Taylor, kick number seven. Will it be goal number seven? That was a great lead. I wonder the feelings of Michael Roach. Pete, on this performance, you'd give him really best player on the ground for a percent, uh, percentage football, wouldn't you? Six kicks and six goals speaks for itself, Lou, doesn't it? Taylor, from the pocket, how's his record now? I think he may have missed that one. Still, it's not a bad conversion rate. Brian Taylor, wearing Neil Barnes' old number. Doesn't look unlike him, actually. 13-5, 83 to 9-9-63. Still the difference is 20 points from VFL Park on seventh big league. And wherever you're watching throughout Australia, we hope you're enjoying the telecast. Eves has the ball, number 24, a new player for Fitzroy. In fact, replaced Jerry McCarthy. Done with the punch. Chris Smith is number eight. Serafini. Leon Harris on the point of the square will put Fitzroy into attack. Puts the ball high, looking for Lee Carlson and finds him well. Carson's left footer is long, up towards full forward. Coleman, a great pass. That was a great pass. Plucked it out of the air, over the top of Big Al. Watch it in replay. One of the best grabs of the day from Glenn Coleman. Almost like his namesake, John. I'm not putting him in that class, but it was a fine mark. 40 metres out. The kick is, I think, off target. One behind, says the goal umpire. So a couple of misses by Conlon and now Coleman could prove costly for Fitzroy. They trail by 19 points. Ball back into play this time by Strawn out towards half back. Coming across there is Dunn. Got underneath that one. The ball knocked out of Egan at half back. Quickly plays on, kicks it out wide. Two players coming in here, Rollings and Taylor, but uh, it beats them both and it's out of bounds on that centre wing position. Fitzroy, nine goals, 10-64 to Richmond, 13-5-83. Approaching the 28-minute mark of this, the third quarter. Perfect day for football. Pretty hot, but uh, still, uh, players are putting up a good show here. The ball back by Wilson. Cox smothers the ball. Going after him now is drawn. Cox overruns it. Taps the ball on again. A chance now for Landy to pick it up. He's grabbed but spins away from his opponent nicely. As he kicks the ball back towards their half four line. Smith going for the punt. Successful that time. Wiley scoops it on, but the umpire's found a free kick against Smith for getting over the top of uh, Cloak's shoulders, and he'll take the free kick out there at uh, half forward. Been a pretty quiet play today, Cloak. Smith hasn't done a bad job, really. Hasn't been an outstanding player himself, but he's contained uh, Cloak. We see Dunn have a bit of a fumble that time. Finally kick it off the ground. Picked up by Point, and a hand pass coming over there to uh, Parrish. Another one back to Hinton, a short pass, it's OK, grabbed by Laurie. I should imagine he'll go for a long kick, he has, trying to find Coleman down there, but he's sandwiched between two of them, and there's Drawn going right through the pack, showing a lot of strength out towards Reigns. Reigns out there on that wing position, couldn't get the ball in time, and it's out of bounds. Reigns hasn't had many kicks this quarter, I don't think, uh, one kick for the quarter. Well, it's a pretty tiring sort of a day, Lou, and one of these players, to me, starting to slow down quite somewhat. Ball out of bounds on that uh, half forward line for Fitzroy, about 70 metres around from their goal. Knocked out by Rendell. Hits the deck. There's Reigns going for kick number two for this quarter. Drives the ball well over towards centre half forward. Cloak coming and he's got the city. He's got the mark. And he'd be about, uh, let's see, 45 metres out from goal directly in front. Cloak has already kicked one goal. And of course, Taylor doing a magnificent job up there at full forward. Seven kicks for six goals. 
Cloak could easily kick this distance. Let's see what he can do with it. There's the kick coming in now from Cloak. It's a wobbly old punt kick. Is it coming around enough? No, it's through for one point. So it's Fitzroy 9, 10, 64 to Richmond uh, 13, 6, 84. Seventh big league at the 30-minute mark of the third term. 20 points the difference. Eves will kick the ball into play. Being given the job to mine Taylor. After Jerry McCarthy had a few kicked against him. Rental misses the mark. The backup from Poynton. Range grabbed him, but he didn't have the ball. And the umpire says a free kick to the Lions. A balk and play on. Centre wing, it's all Richmond. Mervyn Kane will get there first in front of McMahon. Interesting, destroyed. Parrish, Rioli takes the mark. Better judgment. Egan is on centre wing. Egan's long raking punt kick down towards the half forward line. The bounce will suit Taylor. Wiley can't pick him up. Now it doesn't bounce too well for him. Taylor rushes it through. Well played, Neville Taylor. Got a push in the back, a free kick, Pete. I think he deserved it. He got a good bounce and then he couldn't take it. A couple of awkward ones. Taylor's free kick as the siren goes for three quarter time with the scores Richmond leading. 13-6-84 to Fitzroy, 9-10-64. So 20 points the difference, Andrew. Have you changed your thoughts at all from that half-time summary? No, I think they've uh, given themselves a bit of a chance, Fitzroy. I think uh, young Cox um, played exceptionally well that quarter, gave them something up in the forward line, and I think uh, if they can get the likes of Quinlan playing well again, I think they've still got a show. Certainly Richmond have, uh, are in the box seat with a lead like that, but I think there's still a chance. Bruce, the composure of the Richmond side could be a telling thing in the final quarter. They look, they look composed, don't yes, they? Yes, they finished on very well in their uh, practice matches, David. Uh, they're strong finishers and have been for a, a number of years, and I think that's where it'll tell. They'll uh, start to get on top of Fitzroy in the, in the last quarter, I'm certainly hoping so, because I want to take some money off these two fellows beside me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they're kicking the ball better to position. I think uh, Fitzroy's short game's tending to break down. I think that they're wasting a lot of opportunities. The number of times they short pass enhances the number of times they can be dispossessed. And I, I think that will tell against them in the long run. Well, our commentators down at VFL Park seem to have taken a fascination to Rioli, the uh, newcomer from South Fremantle. He's had a very big game, hasn't he? Yes, I think it's very understandable that they have done so, uh, David. He's, uh, he's really moving well. He's very smart with his movements. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to go about uh, getting the ball and disposing of the ball, and he's playing exceptionally well. But uh, I think Fitzroy are still in this game. They, we're still in the situation where we have equal scoring shots for both sides. So uh, it's still pretty much anybody's, even though there's a 20-point margin. That's a bit to catch up, but uh, you know, anything on the right side of six goals can be caught up in the last quarter, and I, I think they're still in there with a bit of a chance. OK, more VFL action coming up after this break on Saturday Sport. Welcome back to Saturday Sport, and Kenny Hose is in a very benevolent mood today. He's got some <laughs> more details of a, yet another viewer's prize on Saturday Sport. People have said of me one of the biggest problems I have is that I'm generous to a fault, and we're about to prove it because we've got another great competition for you. What are you laughing about? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> we've got another great competition coming up for you, the viewer, throughout the year on, uh, on the VFL match during Saturday Sport, and uh, this is what it's all about. We're going to run a goal of the month competition, which is based fairly simply similarly along the lines of our TAA competition. Each week in the VFL segment we'll show you a great goal from one of the games and they'll go goals A, B and C and then we'll show you them all once again and you decide which of those you consider is the best and we'll give you an address a little later on that you can send your entries to with your name and address on the back and the goal that you've selected on the back and uh, the winner of that uh, goal each month will receive from Pi and Canberra Television the superb Pi DRC1002. That's not the one that's in your screen at the moment, actually. <laughs> that's the goal kicking award that we have, but the Pi DRC1002 is a brand new bit of gear. There it is right there from Pi. Uh, it's a sensational unit in that you can tape direct from one tape to another and do your own editing on uh, cassette tapes and so forth. It also is uh, an AM FM radio, a tremendous little piece of equipment. I'd never seen anything quite like it before and it's brand spanking new from Pi. And then the goal of the year receives, with the compliments of Canberra Television and Pi, a VCR, video cassette recorder for your home. And that is a piece of gear that if you're a football fan you should not be without. So a great prize coming up, that'll be the Canberra Pi Goal of the Month competition right here on Saturday afternoons. Thanks David. Well, Bruce, he does that very, very well, doesn't he? He does, he yeah. does. And his mouth never moves when he does back. it. Yeah, he's <laughs> tremendous. The way you're winding him up at the back there is <laughs> absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Bruce, uh, let's just talk briefly about uh, the Escort Cup match on 
uh, Tuesday night. What are your thoughts of that one, Hawthorne and Melbourne? Well, I'm, uh, I, th I think that Melbourne are going to win that one. <laughs> because they're coached <laughs> by Ronald Dale Brassie, right? the greatest coach in oh, Australia. Yeah, and um, the they will win. They will win. They really will. It'll be a great game. I'll be uh, tuned into well, that one, might David. be a great coach, but if you haven't got any players, you can't be much of a coach, can you? He does. It. He just weighs the magic wand <laughs> that it just happens. It's Tuesday great night. stuff. Dear me. He's tremendous. No, it'll be a top game. Hawthorne are not doing all that well. Uh, they've been struggling. Their, their practice match form. I think they've only beaten Footscray in the practice matches. And uh, Footscray was sadly. That's hard to beat them, uh, oh, uh, no, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Uh, Footscray <laughs> was sadly depleted that day. They only had five players turned up. The bus That's was late. That's all they've got. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Andrew, what, what do you think of this, uh, the Escort Championship? It's giving. Uh, the viewers a, a chance to see, like last week, uh, Port Adelaide, aside from the South Australian National Football League. Yes, certainly. Uh, the teams from uh, South Australia and Western Australia compete uh, well early in the competition. It does get a little bit hard for them, and they've probably got the disadvantage of having to traipse over to Melbourne every week to play. And uh, certainly the greasy conditions that prevail in the night games, uh, I think, really do give the VF clubs a bit of an edge. $470,000 worth of sponsorship though, that must make the clubs uh, be all that more determined to, to take that title out. Certainly is and the, uh, the other advantage is too that most clubs tend to give a lot of the prize money to the players as an end of season trip or uh, as bonuses so you've normally got the players who are playing for pretty much for keeps you know it's, it's well worth winning. Well do you want to start changing your bets from the original one earlier uh, when we went to air about your prediction uh, before we go into this final quarter? No, I'll stick with them to the end. I think that they've, uh, they've certainly still got a chance as... Uh, Be born loser comes for Collingwood, still won't change anybody. <laughs> you think they'd learn, me? <laughs> think they'd learn after all these years. What about you'll stick on yours, Bruce? You won't, oh, you won't change. Oh, jolly word. Yeah. Yes, oh, yes. I'm what about you, Ken? I, I'm going to stay with them, uh, mainly because Bruce won't let me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, I think it's time that uh, we went back to uh, VFL Park and rejoin our commentators down there, Peter Landy and Lou Richards, for the final quarter. Uh, of this very exciting There's match from VFL Park. Down there, whether that's uh, a legacy of last year, I don't know. It might just be uh, some sort of a protection. But it is certainly good to see him back. And as I said it in the uh, in the commentary, Leon Harris from Fitzroy, number 38, who also had a knee operation last year. Fitzroy have made quite a few changes during that uh, third quarter. They put Leon Harris onto uh, onto Bartlett, shifting uh, Laurie down to the forward line, and Conlon was taken out of the centre because uh, Reigns had dominated that position, and uh, Conlon went down to the forward pocket and was reasonably successful too. Possibly Conlon, uh, Conlon's best quarter. The final quarter now at BFL Park, with Richmond leading 84 to 64. Can the Lions come back after Richmond had led most of the day? Quinlan tackling a little bit too high, arguably. Terry Smith getting up with the ball, but won't be getting a free kick. Umpire Kevin Smith has decided to ball it up. Knocked down by Dutt. Rollings. High to half forward. Muggerton. Great debut for Richmond today. Gets it onto his skipper. That won't lose him any points. Hinchin comes in. Harris is there. Out to Smith. Detroit centre half back. Short kick. It goes to Wilson. Position number 21, not a good one to Rendell. A high kick just into the square. Brian Wood goes for the punch. Down to Reigns, who had a quiet third term, only had two kicks. Here's his first for the last quarter. Reigns, beautiful kick. Looking down there for Bartlett. Bartlett's already kicked a couple of goals. Lines it up. Off target and the mark taken by Eves in the goal square. In front of Taylor, who's already kicked six goals from seven kicks. Hinchin, the back pocket player, in front of Folk. Goes for the short one. Nevertheless, covering a fair bit of ground at the end. It bounced a long way. Kane's kick is a high one. Hinchin again getting underneath it, but it won't matter because the ball is out of bounds on the full. And that will necessitate a free kick to Hinchin, which he will take just in front of the trainer's bunker. 84 to 64. Seven's big league from VFL Park. Emmett Dunn in front. McMahon flies behind. They both misjudge the ball and the mark being paid to Reigns. Sorry, it's Mervyn Kane. Merv Kane on centre wing. Wobbly punt kick. Cloak flies. Two hands to the ball. Can't mark it. Very scrambly opening to the final term. Rollings on the boundary line. Over the head of Bartlett. He tapped it straight to his opponent, Harris. Who got offloaded and is not too good. By his ex-teammate, too, in Muggerman. His number's been taken. 
by that taking the notebook out and away you go bumps your uncle there you've got not much chance about that one it's like getting a parking ticket beat umpire rowan saws writing one can presume legibly well the ball back into play now as we see it picked up by egan a good hand pass out wide to landy on his own there at half back for the tigers the score at the moment 84 points richmond to uh, fitzroy 64 points down there a while he's got the mark got away from taylor and takes the mark out there at half forward about 60 meters out from goal well muggan reported uh, for uh, richmond playing his first game for the tigers after swapping over from fitzroy ball kicked out wide by eves coming in to meet it now as wood on his own goes for a short pass it's a good one and he finds smith Smith back on the ground. He was off uh, qu quite some time uh, after receiving a nasty knock in that uh, second quarter. We'll wait there for uh, Smith to have this shot from about 45 metres out. There's uh, Taylor being well guarded by Eves down there in the square. He's already kicked six goals, Taylor. The kick by uh, Smith falls a bit short. The pack fly. Big uh, Rendell gets the punch out. Coming in to meet it now as Hitchin. He beat uh, Bartlett. I think Bartlett might have collected him. He staggered there. Bartlett not too happy with the result. Certainly staggered him for a while. He looked as though he could have run and he's down. And they've got to get him on his feet. Oof. Bang. I don't know where he could be catching the... Uh, Just on the jaw. On the jaw. Now he... Yeah, certainly got... Looks as though he's got a nasty one in the face there in the mouth. Free kick uh, going, of course, over to Quinlan now. A long kick out there towards the wing position over the top of the pack. Backing up well as Jess. And he kicks the ball back. A chance here now for the ball to be punched away by Rendell. He does. But there's Tiger players all over the place. Picking it up very easy that time as Rowlings goes for a long kick. Looking for Clay off the top of the pack. But the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go against. Now he's called play on as he said, uh, stop, rather than stop Fitzroy's play on style. Picked up by Quinlan back to Taylor again. A long kick, a chance now for, oh, they spoil each other. Laurie Ann, well, actually, uh, what's his name? Uh, Wilson spoiled Laurie. We see Manane pick it up, go for a kick out wide, but it's too wide, and the ball is out of bounds. There was no talking between those two players then because they certainly should have grabbed that mark. A little bit of bad luck for Fitzroy. They could certainly do with the change of it. Hinchin was still in the hands of the trainers up until a couple of moments ago. There he is. I thought he was going to go off at one stage, but now he seems quite okay as we watch this boundary throw in. Knocked down by Emmett Dunn. And the ball again over the boundary line for a throw in. Paul Fitzroy still trailing by 20 points. We've had no score so far in the final term, which has been in progress a few seconds in excess of five minutes. Dunn in front again. Palms it down beautifully. Taken away by Landy, but not too far. Bernie Quinlan. Quinlan is at right half forward flank. Beautiful kick, as we would expect from him. Down towards full forward. Martello's big punch sees the ball safely over the boundary line. And again, we will see a throw in. This time it's a little bit closer to goal, about uh, 10 or 12 metres from the behind post. Coleman and Martello, the latter getting the front position. Off the hands of Wilson. Quinlan's there again, and again a boundary throw in. So we've had four now in the space of uh, well, about a minute and a bit. Well, this is certainly suiting Richmond because they've got the play bottled up at the moment. Fitzroy have to get the score on the board. There's uh, young Hinchin, number 15. Rowlings. High towards the flank, and the mark taken down here by Dunn in front of uh, number nine in Rendell. Emma Dunn, left half-back flank for the Tigers. To set a wing. Cloak takes the good mark. Wiley, right on the boundary line. Robert Wiley tries the short pass, puts it high. Rioli sidesteps magnificently. The shepherd is from range. Rioli balks well, shoots at goal. It's off target. Looks for Taylor. Eves is there. Contested well, Eves, who replaced McCarthy in that key position. And again, the ball over the boundary line. <laughs> Eves and uh, Taylor having a bit of a dip there. He's come out of it with a free kick, I think. He has. Well, Eves has played him pretty close since he came on. I don't think he's kicked a goal on Eves yet. He did have a shot, but missed it. Rental in front. Loses it ultimately. Wood to Rowlings. Oh, beautiful sidestep. Gets around Poynton. Lines up the goals and has put it through. His first goal and Richmond go further ahead. The Tigers, 14 goals, 6. That's 90 points to Richmond, 9-10, 64. Tell you what, he's played very well since half-time, Rowlings. Uh, 
Peter. He certainly has. And a very effective player. And he was telling me yesterday he believes he's the fittest he's ever been in his many seasons of league football, now working with the Richmond Club as promotions officer. On seventh big league in the final quarter, we're now seven and a half minutes in. Randell gets it down there to McCarthy, but he loses that, picked up by Smith, back there towards centre-half forward, cloak at the front, plus he's got the mark, and the Tigers are really coming alight now as the ball is hand-passed out there to Reigns. It's time to steady and fire the ball back up there towards the full forward position. Oh, well played by Eves that time, and uh, as Peter said, he's had... Uh, Taylor well covers the hand pass goes out to Taylor of Fitzroy out wide towards that wing position and a mark there to point point with the mark out there on the center wing position Fitzroy struggling at the moment there's 64 points to uh, Richmond 90 points kick is a very high one towards Wilson still playing very well for Fitzroy and a 15 meter penalty against Rollins we haven't had too many of those today no, have we? we have not so this uh, gives him a chance to drive the ball well up there towards the full forward zone. Flying high was Conlon, but playing it safe was Malthouse. Tapped it over his head and threw for a point. So it's uh, nine goals, 10 nine goals, 11 65. Uh, Fitzroy to Richmond, 14 6 90, as we wait now for the ball to come back into play. Shot out there towards that half back flank. In front is Rendell. Umpires found a free kick. It'll go to the big Fitzroy Ruckman out there at half forward. Still about uh, 55 metres out from goal. As a matter of fact, this fellow hasn't played badly all day. He's been the best Ruckman on the ground by far. A long kick is up there towards the full forward zone. The pack set themselves again. And uh, Coleman claiming the mark, and the umpire's going to play this. He's right on the edge of the kickoff mark. Coleman yet to score a goal. He's kicked three points. There's the shot in replay again as we see Coleman in the front or in between the two Richmond players and that was a damn good mark to grab that one Coleman taking his time to try and put his first goal on the board for Fitzroy and they badly need one at the moment they're trailing by uh, 25 points at the moment the kick is uh, through for one goal so Fitzroy move on to uh, 10 goals 11.71 to Richmond 14.690 at the nine and a half minute mark well, are they still at it? 19, well, points, 19 the points, it doesn't say you're out of the game, but they're not playing with enough uh, pep as far as I'm concerned at the moment. They seem to get that close, and then Richmond get another couple of goals and go ahead and coast for an extra few minutes. So Fitzroy have to get the next couple of goals to have any chance of staying in this match. As once again, the boundary umpires looking longingly towards the crowd. I think we may have lost another ball. Policeman walking over to uh, supervise. That's not him. One thing about it, uh, Peter, they got another goal here, Fitzroy. Yes. They, you could get uh, the adrenaline running again because both sides are very, very tight out there at the moment. And uh, all you want, when you, particularly when you've been down all day, is to get a goal at this stage of the quarter and you could run over the top of your opponents. But that's easier said than done because that back line of Richmond is very, very strong indeed. And they've played grand football today. Well, if that uh, young man doesn't get over the fence, he'll be taken off and... Uh, I think he could be spending the night in the slam. So the police is doing a great job here at VFL Park. Not standing any nonsense. That's the way it should be. Seventh big league at the 11 minute mark of the final quarter. 71 plays 90. Can the Lions come back after that goal? Carlson high towards the centre half forward position. Quinlan flies. Two hands. Couldn't grab it. Up to full forward, Martano is there, it's too long for him. Wilson valiantly trying to keep it in play, not successful. It will be a boundary throw in some uh, 8 or 10 metres from the behind post with Fitzroy in attack. Well, they've got to convert here. 11 and a half minutes gone, if they can get this next goal, as Lou said, they really could get the adrenaline going and come right back in this match after Richmond have led most of the afternoon. It's knocked down by Coleman, looking for Wilson, who tries to keep it in play. It goes to the wrong man, oh, getting offloaded was Malthouse. Get a free kick, I think. And it could be reportable. Umpire Kevin Smith didn't construe it that way. It was nevertheless very heavy. And Michael Malthouse is a pretty tough sort of a guy. Free kick being taken down there by Egan. Wiley. Rowlings inside the boundary line. Marks in front of Taylor. Good grab by Barry Rowlings. Rowlings just short of left half forward.
Pope. Push him back. Could have touched, uh, yes, he did. I think that he may have overacted that time, uh, Smith. He could have been a bit lucky to get that free kick, Peter. Well, I guess it was there, but nevertheless technical. Still 19 points, the difference in favour of Richmond. The Tigers hanging on to their lead. Both uh, sides looking pretty tired at the moment. Knocked away by McCarthy, who I notice is back onto the field. Jess, long handball, looks for Rioli or Muggerburn. Could be a nasty collision, they avoided it. Jess is in there, taps it out cleverly, looking for Brian Wood. Last year's captain, Wood from centre-half forward. Puts it high towards full forward again, looking for Cloak. And Smith takes a safe mark. Over to Eves, the replacement full-back, and doing a pretty good job there. The centre-wing position. Cox, the spin-out, successful at Carlson. Carlson on the wing, tries the short pass, looking for Superboot. Quinlan's handball, effective again to McMahon. McMahon on the move from half-forward, got plenty of pace. Just can't pick him up. Long shot at goal, into uh, Parrish, over the line for a roundly throw in. Out of bounds in that forward pocket, 10-11-71, Fitzroy to Richmond, 14-6-90. 19, or, what's that, 19 points the difference, and still plenty of time for Fitzroy to get up if they're good enough. Right against the point post, a chance for Fitzroy to score now. Martello and Coleman going for the knock. And oh, we've got one in the back. Umpire set play on, it's pick knocked out there to Jess. It's a bad kick along the ground. Chance for Fitzroy now, it bounced too high for Cast. This is Strong coming after it. And it's finally forced out of bounds. Midway between the wing and uh, half forward flank positions for Fitzroy. They're trailing by 19 points. And we're just on the 14 minute mark of this last quarter. It'll be Rendell and uh, Dunn to go for the knockout. Dunn in the front posse. Both missed that one. McCarthy tried to tap it. Finally grabbed by Smith. A hurried kick back there. Monane trying to take it over the top of Rioli. He goes down. He's grabbed. Gets a hand pass out to Muggerman. He fumbles the ball. And there's a bit of a stack up here. And the umpire's going to ball it up towards the edge of the square. So Fitzroy have got to get a goal here to get themselves going again. Up she goes. Dunn gets the knockout, coming in to meet it as well. He hasn't played a bad game today either. Short pass. There's a mark out there on that half-four line, finally picked up by Smith, the mark. Herbert on the ground and Parrish off for Fitzroy. Oh, good mark to play. Got in front of Smith that time, and he's only about uh, 45 metres out from goal. And the cloak, of course, has already kicked one. There's it is in replay. A real good uh, mark on the part of uh, the Richmond skipper that time. It's a sort of mark that uh, gives the rest of the side a lot of encouragement. Kicked by uh, Cloak. It's a high one. It's a pretty good one, too. Will it make the distance? Taylor tried to mark that, but it's off the top of the pack and through for one point. So it's 20 points the difference now. 10 goals, 11.71. Fitzroy to Richmond, 14.791. 15 and a half minutes gone of this last quarter. Well, it means Fitzroy, of course, have got to get four goals in about 15 minutes without Richmond scoring. Wood. Taking a good mark after Pointon and slipped over at the crucial moment. And Richmond doing all the attacking at present. Taylor, good lead. Moves pretty well for a big guy. Can he make it goal number seven? I would suggest within kicking distance, but as you can see, it was right on the boundary line. Probably around about 35 to 40 metres out from goal. Well, it was 20 points the difference at three-quarter time, and it still is that at the moment. Plenty of Fitzroy players are there, and the man to drag it down is Jerry McCarthy. Pass out to half-back. Oh, Emma Dunn slips over, and he's done that twice today. Carlson, McCarthy, and he collected Rioli, or vice versa. Muggerman goes through. Successful, Terry Smith. Smith lines up the goals. That could be the sealer for Fitzroy. Sure it goes. His first goal, and the Tigers go further ahead on seventh big lead. The scores, Richmond 15-7, 97 points, leading Fitzroy 10-11-71. Well, that one could have done the damage, Pete. Well, and there's in replay again, McCarthy tried to get uh, past. I think it was the only thing he could do, the big bloke, and finally was tapped away and grabbed by Smith. A very steady goal indeed, and a, a valuable one because Fitzroy was still hanging in there. That's going to make the difference, I would say. You're watching Simmons Big League. It's now 26 points the difference at the 17-minute mark of the final term. Rendell gets the tap down. Rain's taking the ball but can't quite pick it up. Egan's there too. Down goes, uh, who was it, Taylor down? Now it's uh, Carlson with a good hand pass out there to Laurie. Laurie's clear. 
Goes for a short pass out wide. Looking there for Coleman. It's too long and the ball is out of bounds. About 25 metres around from the Fitzroy goal. Fitzroy are at 10 goals, 11.71 to Richmond, 15.797. 26 points the difference in favour of the Tigers. So Fitzroy will have to pull one really out of the bag to win this game. Both sides are very tired after this uh, match here on this very hot day in Melbourne. Around about 28 degrees. The ball out of bounds. Still about uh, 45 to 50 metres around from the Fitzroy goal. Martello to come in uh, with Coleman. Martello got the tap down for the boundary line again. And once again, it's out of bounds. This time it's about 60 metres around from the uh, Fitzroy goal. Full marks of this Richmond defence. They've stood up well. See Kane waiting to come on the ground for Richmond. One of their very good players. Whatever well, he is on the ground, I should say. Ball knocked to the ground. Picked up by Wilson. Been a great battler all day. Over to Laurie. Another hand pass. Not a good one. Going after mid. It now is Point. Coleman collected Wood. A snap for goal by Point. But he's off target. And the ball is out of bounds. Out of bounds in that uh, forward pocket position on the full and a penalty free kick to go to Richmond down there through Malthouse. Malthouse down the back pocket. And I think Richmond can sit back and smoke the old cherry wood now because they've got the game under control. McCarthy flies high, takes a mark, a hand pass to point in the game. A left foot snap for goal. This may be better. It's coming around. Is it enough? Yes, a goal. Well, they live again. So the score is 11 goals, 11.77 Fitzroy to Richmond, 15.797. Still 20 points the difference, but that is where it ends because that was the difference at three-quarter uh, three time as Egan comes off the ground and Peter Welsh comes back on. It'd be about 11 minutes to go, I'd reckon, Pete, but still, if you're good enough, you could win it. Yes, if they're good enough, they could still win it, Fitzroy, although they, they won't have my money on them. No, both sides are tied. 20 points the difference. Can Fitzroy come back after that final goal? Reigns, a class player, if ever there was one, the half four that was touched, so it won't be a mark. Rioli shows courage to Wiley. The West Australians have it. Wiley up towards the forward pocket. He's looking for Taylor. Leaves is right there with him. Over the boundary line is the ball. Yes, it is. It will be a throw in, if not a free kick. Umpire Rowan Saw says throw it into the boundary umpire. And he will do just that. It's about 25 metres around from the behind post at the 20-minute mark of the term. Smith, off the chest, looks for Wilson. It's effective to Leon Harris. Harris has kicked wide towards point, and they're going the long way around the Lions, and that generally isn't successful at VFL Park. Brian Wood is quite content to keep the ball in play, gets it to Terry Smith. Still the Lions are trying hard to get a clear point, and again, Rioli's in the way, tackles well. No Detroit player backing up, and so it goes to Rollings. Rollins with a long kick down towards full forward. Taylor in front. Marked in front of Eves. Seven marks to Brian Taylor. And he has kicked six goals. In fact, six goals won as we watch that in replay. As I said, no Fitzroy player backing up point and then. And Rollins took the easiest of uh, misdirected hand passes. And Taylor in front of Eves, very, very strong. And going for goal number seven, this will be the server if Brian Taylor can kick straight. I think he's done just that. Goal number seven to Brian Taylor. Where will they play Michael Roach? And the scores. Richmond, 16-7. 103, leading Fitzroy, 11-11, 77. An old saying in this uh, business, never take a holiday, Pete. Football and television. That's right. And, of course, seven goals on the board uh, is a fine effort from about eight or nine kicks. It is. He's done very kicks. Well. Fantastic effort by Taylor. So I think the Richmond selectors would be feeling pretty happy, not only with the result, but also with their selection of Taylor at full forward today. He's done everything they could have asked for. 21 uh, and a half minutes gone as we see Carlman take the ball back over that half forward line for Fitzroy. Coming out to meet it is Quinlan, but uh, Kane's there before him. Scoops it up in soccer style that uh, time and goes for the boundary line and the ball is out of bounds. Quinlan's been a pretty quiet player since uh, half-time. Since that knock. Well, he's had a few kicks, but he hasn't been uh, as effective as we know Quinlan can be. Coleman and uh, Dunn. Dunn got the tap down to Rollins. He's one of Richmond's best players by far. Rollins, he gets it out to Wood. Wood goes for a long kick over the half-forward line looking for Cloak. 
Cloak out maneuver Smith that time. A quick hand pass over to Smith. Good play on the part of the Richmond captain. Taylor again. Coming for goal number eight. Oh, golly, Michael Roach, that position's a bit shaky now. <laughs> I'm only joking, Michael, if you're watching the replay tonight. He's the champion, Michael, but this kid's on a marvellous job. There you see it in replay. Good backing up by uh, Smith and good play by the Richmond skipper to give that hand pass over. And that's what you call good leading out for a, a full forward. Directly in front, fires. And there's goal number eight on the board to uh, Taylor. And that's a fine effort. 11 goals, 11, 77 Fitzroy to Richmond, 17, 7, 109. Well, you can't do much better than that. I guess if there's a match winner, it has to be Brian Taylor with eight goals. You can't do any better than convert as often as he had. That's uh, eight goals, one. He's kicked from nine kicks. Well, you stick him up there in front of the goals and you expect the kick goals from that kid's done that all the way. Fantastic effort. 23 minutes gone in the final quarter as Richmond run away with this match. Well, knocked out by Coleman again. Grabbed by Wood. Good play by Richmond. Hain, uh, Reigns is in trouble. Gets a hand pass back towards Coleman. Another one coming back there to point. He's going to be in a bit of trouble here. Couldn't get clear. Rioli goes down. Goes for a hand pass. and decides to go for a kick. Out there towards uh, Wiley. Punched away by Taylor. Done over to Wiley again. They're backing up beautifully, Richmond. Short pass. And the ex Fitzroy player, Muggerman's taken the mark. About uh, 40 metres out from goal, and Muggerman's already kicked one goal. He may look for Taylor. Let's see whether Taylor can grab this one. He's got the chance now in front. No, goal. let it go. It's simple. Actually, let that for seven off very well for a goal. Good play on the part of Taylor. He can only give him that goal, even though Muggerman kicked it. So the score is Richmond, 18 goals, 7, 115. Great kicking. Now annihilating Fitzroy, 11 11, 77. Well shepherded through. And we can't really say enough about that good team play by Richmond. Just missed his hand, too, just quietly. Not so much in that. I don't know whether he shepherd off or went for the mark. <laughs> 115 to 77 of the final term on the 7th Big League. It's all Richmond. Rioli. Rollings. It's Roy running well and truly out of steam. Behind the Packers, Taylor. Sharks it and grab. Bartha calling for it and gets it hungry around Smith shrugs two tackles straightens up hey, is that one one point I think yes Martha did everything right there except kick straight and you can't blame him for that he was under plenty of pressure when the boot finally connected with the ball 116 to 77 it's all Richmond sounding a warning to season 1982 the Tigers are back Wood can't complete the mark Coleman is there Gets around David Cloak, okay. Back towards centre wing, looking for Laurie. Laurie takes the mark, doesn't let him down. Started off on Kevin Bartlett. And here's a 15-metre penalty. I think only ran about the third for the day. Very few of them applied by the umpires, but we have had one number taken. Noel Muggerman, number 35, seemingly reported by umpire Swords. Jess with the big punch from centre-half back. Peter Welsh is back on the field. Welsh with the handball to Barry Rowlings, former Hawthorne players. To centre wing, Terry Smith has the mark and takes it in front of Serafini. Tries the short pass. Morris Rioli goes as the crowd. Rioli plays it on straight away for Robert Wiley. The West Australians do it again. And look at that from beautiful goal from Wiley. The West Australians combining well. That's his third goal and annihilation. Richmond, 19 goals, 8, 122 points. Fitzroy, 11 11, 77. Well, he hasn't been an outstanding play, but by golly, when he gets the ball, Peter, it's dynamite, isn't it? There he is on screen, and that was a magnificent pass from Rioli, and we've seen him do a, a few hand passes. You watch this in replay. Right down Wiley's throat, perfect to position. Tell you what, he's going to be a real asset to this side. Seventh big league from VFL Park, 26 and a quarter minutes gone. 122 Richmond to Fitzroy 77 and the Tigers are back really fighting now they've really got a snail up as the ball comes out there to Carlson after him is Martello Carlson showing too much pace he's gone for a bounce he's going to lose this for sure the big fella got him holding the ball holding the ball against him no it's the other way well it's holding the man I thought uh, Carlson uh, well may have lost that Martello's not too happy about it I'll tell you that now Carlson from about, uh, what do you reckon about this? He's still got the ball and the big fellas. They might have pushed him in the back. Let's see what happens here now. The kick by Carlson. It's a left footer. Fires for the goals. It's coming around nicely right through the middle. 
So Fitzroy move on to 12 goals, 11.83. To um, Richmond, 19.8, 122. That's magnificent kicking on the part of Richmond, 19.8 and mainly due to their full forward kicking eight goals from nine kicks actually the effective scoring shots Lou about the same 12 and 11 23 for Fitzroy and uh, 22 for Richmond so it is their straight kicking really on the scoreboard that has won it for Richmond 27 and a half minutes gone final quarter Coleman uh, goes with a knock but it's not a good one it comes back to Carlson back there towards uh, Landy and Richmond get the ball away from the danger zone again Landy's kicked to half forward looking for Rioli and why shouldn't he he's coming back into his own now after a fairly quiet first half Cloak can't drag that one up from the carpet the Richmond skipper plays on after the Smith tackle out towards Rowlings danger here again for Fitzroy the left footer in towards the goal square Taylor no taken down there in front by Muggerman. I think Taylor could have got that one, but Muggerman was in a better position. And Noel Muggerman has a chance to bring up his third goal. He's kicked two so far. Noel Muggerman directly in front, only a few metres out from goal. Kicks truly, I believe, and has popped it through. So the Tigers really running right away with this game now. And the scores on seventh big league. Richmond, 20 goals, three. Well, eight rather 128 to Fitzroy 12 11 83 my name coming off the ground uh, replaced uh, by Paris for Fitzroy what's this in replay again out there towards uh, Rollins who's been a very good player for Richmond today and the mark to Muggerman Taylor could have easily marked it I suppose but Taylor's already kicked eight goals I said from nine kicks but it's from ten kicks percentage football at its best from the big uh, fellow there at full forward knocked out by Dunn Richmond really on top now as we see Smith pick up the ball. Go for a short pass. Rioli's got it. Done some marvellous things today. Hasn't been the best player on the ground by a long shot, but uh, what he's done here today, I think he's given the Richmond selectors a chance to see what a great play he's going to be. Look at the way he takes that mark. He's got style and class. He's had 11 kicks and 10 hand pass. Not a bad sort of an effort for fellas had a quiet day. Rioli from about, let's see, uh, 25 to 30 metres out from goal. Yet to score one. It's a left foot kick. Off target. I think he's better off uh, giving the kicks away so his mates can kick him because that was a bad shot. 12 goals, 11.83. Uh, Fitzroy to Richmond, 20 goals, 9, 129. And uh, we're at the uh, 29 and a half, just on the... Uh, Let's over the 29 and a half, approaching the 30-minute mark of this quarter. A free kick going there to Serafini, but the... Steams one out of Fitzroy now. The Tigers well on top, and the way they've played it today, they're going to be a real power to be reckoned with this year. People couldn't understand how they played so badly last year after winning the 1980 Premiership. The ball has kicked long down there towards the Fitzroy half forward line. Coming out to meet it now is Moldhouse. Down he goes. Cox gets through the pack, a chance to score a goal here. Runs to an open one. I think he's put it through for a goal. But it's all over by the shouting. That's goal number three to Cox. And Fitzroy move on to 13 goals, 11.89. To Richmond, 20 goals, 9, 129 points. Well, Fitzroy have had plenty of chance, but they're not quite good enough today. Cox getting nicely clear, runs to an open goal, was left unattended that time, but the Richmond defenders have been great today, and uh, you can't blame them for having a bit of a rest now after the game's well in hand. They've had plenty of good players, Richmond, and they've played very effective football, going straight down the guy, ground, and they've also had a target to kick to in Taylor, who's finally, well, he hasn't finished yet. He's kicked eight goals from ten kicks. A fine performance from the young full forward. Picked up by Muggerman, the ex-Fitzroy player, over there to Wiley, back up there towards the full forward position. Taylor and Eves going for it, but the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go down the... It's going to go down the field. It'll beat the Taylor. It was an act incident after the ball was kicked that time. So Taylor, even though this may be a bit of a charity one, has a chance to score his ninth goal from 11 kicks. It's only about 20 metres out, if that. Oh, he's missed the easiest of shots. So Richmond move on to 20 goals, 10, 130, to Fitzroy, 13, 11, 89. 31 and a half minutes gone of this last quarter. Fitzroy would be disappointed with their performance today. Hasn't been the greatest. They've never beaten Richmond on this big uh, VFL park, and I can understand why, because they certainly take the long way around. Wilson breaking clear. Been a fine player for Fitzroy today. 
The Brisbane backing up well in defence as they have all day. Gets the ball out there through uh, Malthouse to Mark to Wood. He's off like a shot there. Away from point. Back into attack go the Tigers. Up there towards Cloak and Smith. Knocked away by Smith. Hits the deck. Mugovan comes in. Taps it out there as the siren to end the game. And it's been a great victory for Richmond today at BFL Park. In front of a crowd of about 40,000 people. Richmond 20 goals, 10, 130 to Fitzroy 13, 11, 89. Well, certainly a great performance by Richmond. What a way for them to start the 1982 season, Ken. Yes.